just a few blocks from Cherry Mansion is the Tennessee River Museum. And we're pretty amped to be here. Yes, we did. Okay. If you could sign in on the book, please. You do the book. Sir. Okay. And we do have a five dollar per person fee. You only in the area for a little bit of vacation? Yes. Yes, we came to. Nice. We've already been to Shiloh, and we uh, went to see Cherry Mansion today. Okay. This. Okay. Yeah, we went to Shiloh last year. Yeah, Shiloh last year. Oh, yeah. oh, we gotta come back and go to Savannah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sweet. That's great. It's yeah. a beautiful little town. There are pamphlets. Awesome. Yeah, that, that tells a little more about the history of it. Very nice. Man, this is neat. They have all manner of exhibits from the history of life in and around the Tennessee River. That's cool. That's really cool. Look at this crab. Wow. Fossilized crab. This crab is most definitely a highlight. This is a really good museum. Robert Bruce Wade, 1889 to 1973. He had quite an achievement in his field. This is the room that blew me away. <laughs> I did. Look at the arrowheads. They really are. Beautifully preserved and displayed. Really impressive. Archaic knives. Covenants, not sure what it is. Look at that, look at they're serrated. They serrated these things. Lost Lakes. Wow. So cool. They have an amazing collection of arrowheads and stone tools. And the serrated edges blew my mind. It just goes on and on. I just cannot get over how they serrated 
these stone tools. It's like a high-end shop at a fashionable mall. But instead of Michael Kors and Fossil, they have stone tools. The display is simply amazing. This made me think of Kolomoki Mounds in South Georgia. It's really impressive to actually visit one of these sites. Legal papers of the early settlers. Land grants, I believe. It's always fascinating to see the faces of the past. People who settled the land and are now long gone. The early bridge, it was a boat. Life wasn't easy. They have displays from the earliest fossils to the Trail of Tears. From the tragedy of first contact, treaty making with the young United States, Removal and Relocation, Trail of Tears. The Dark Age of Assimilation and Termination to Self-Determination. America has some really good museums and in many towns across the land. There's a wealth of information to be learned here. Basically what I'm saying is the Portrait Local Museum. to the era of the Civil War. The best way I can describe this museum is overwhelming. There is so much information it would take days to soak it in. Now we enter the territory of weaponry.
Here's an interesting tidbit. If you remember, Fraley Field was where the corn was growing, right? Yeah, that's where the opening um, of the battle happened around 5 a.m. April 6, 1862. So if you go back and watch our Shiloh series, at one point we're in Fraley Field. This fence post was there at the time of the battle. The effects of a 19th century soldier. And then my clumsy reading of something beautiful and heartbreaking. To Hagar, Farewell Forever by Amor. I know that we have parted and will never meet again. I'm more than broken hearted, and not you without some pain, I know what I must traverse. We're a weary path alone, the web of life unravel, till its fate woe net is gone. I know the link is broken, that can ne'er unite again, that the word is spoken which forever makes us twain. But my sad heart still trembles on the threshold of the door, while manhood scarce dissembles that its grief lives evermore. I know you'll wed another with a hand but not a heart. In vain past love you'll smother, it will not quite depart. Of it will live some token, some winning way not forget, some branchlet which, though broken, yet thank God hath perished not. 1850. Only problem with shooting in these museums is the glare from the glass. ordinance. Now when we talk about war, we think of shooting at each other, especially in this time period, shooting at each other with these, these non-repeating rifles. Look at the woods. The trees broken just destruction in the woods. Imagine what the soldiers must have looked like who had been hit. War is forever an ugly and tragic thing. Contents of two six pound canisters. Imagine those flying everywhere at 200 miles an hour. Saddles. Jennifer Saddle. Popular amongst both northern and southern officers. The Wizard of the Saddle. Nathan Bedford Forrest. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hang on, hang on. This All was right. a highlight. Hey, hang on before you do it. All right, she's up in the cabin of the boat. All right, so hang on, guys. Stacy's going to talk. She's 15, 20 feet from me. And this, this uh, brass or copper tube, I think it's brass, uh, sends, the, uh, sends the, the sound. So 
The video is going to go weird for a second, but just listen. Hey, babe, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you really good. Say something else. And Xanadu, the Kublacon, a stately pleasure film decree. Listen, I see how far over there she is. And this thing right here. So you've seen. Oh, that is amazing. I could do this all day. Do this all day. <laughs> yes. I am about to go. I'm about to go pretend to drive a steamboat. Now we got this, 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 yada, yada, yada. Design and construction, yeah, you can look it all up on the internet, yada, yada, yada. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, I lost, I lost total focus. Here we go. No, but check it out. Here's the steamboat view of Cherry Mansion from the river. Ooh. Ooh, okay, so we're on the steamboat. No, it doesn't turn. Okay, so we're on the steamboat. I mean, I think you can move this. Oh, yeah. And play with it. It doesn't move? Mm-mm. It doesn't seem to. I want to spin it. I want to spin it. Oh, well. Hmm. Remember the Cherry Mansion episode? Wow. That is amazing. So now we see what it's like from the standpoint of the steamboat, the gate, the gate, uh, where's the, where the, the gate, and then he ran down. And the other side is the view of Pittsburgh Landing from the Oh, ferry. Pittsburgh Landing ferry. And this is where Shiloh started, or where he came, where he entered yeah, all the sold, all the Union soldiers came this way from the from ferry boats. And if you remember the Shiloh episode, Pittsburgh Landing is here, and up in those trees up there is the cemetery that we looked at. This is an excellent exhibit. Yeah, it's really fun. So, what are your thoughts on this uh, museum so far? I really wanted to come. I thought the Tennessee River Museum sounded like an interesting idea, and it has been. It's been really good. I'm really glad we came. And this thing. I mean, then, do you want to play the video? The video is not what we expected. This structure is a reproduction of a pilot house on a turn of the century steamboat. Please be seated and enjoy the ride. To see America's heartland, the river is still the best road and steam is the only way to go. Strung along the shores of the Mississippi, the Ohio, the Cumberland, and the Tennessee are places like Shiloh, Vicksburg, Fort Henry, and Fort Donaldson. Where tremendous clashes determined the direction our young republic would take. Commercial giants like St. Louis, Cincinnati, Memphis, and New Orleans shaped our culture as well as all the little river towns in between that still have the charm of a bygone era. Only a handful of steamboats still work the interior waterways, and only three, the Delta Queen, the Mississippi Queen, and the American Queen still offer overnight cruises to towns and battle sites that made history along the waterways. All three make regular stops in Savannah during the cruise season to disembark their passengers for excursions to Shiloh, the Tennessee River Museum, the Cherry Mansion, and other local historical sites. It is an instant tip-off that she was built for the Pacific Coast trade because its width was less than its diameter. She was purchased in 1947 by Captain Tom Wooden and towed from the this west like coast through the Panama Canal to the new Cincinnati. I thought she was going to tell us how to drive the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the Delta Queen's much larger sister, the Mississippi Queen, made her maiden voyage on July 26, 1976. Built at a cost of $27 million, the new steamboat has all steel construction 
as does the 1995 addition to the line. Wow. I seriously thought she was going to tell us what these pulleys did. I think... I think... The video had gotten more commercial as the time went by. I'll pin it underneath. Boiler explosions were a huge problem. Look at this bell. Like it's a real bell. They found it in the bottom of the river. Ooh. Wow. That is that is thick too. Please do not touch or ring our bell. Brian's got a really bad habit of doing that. He's very tactile. And he can't stop touching the artifacts. People back in the day touched them. They should put it in a glass case and they don't want people to touch it because people can't read. Look at this, this one's sunk. Buttons. That is amazing. Think of the effort it took wow. to make these buttons. There's a whole industry. post-Civil War and the creation of a national monument. That's awesome. In a tornado. This is something we had previously not known about. Oh. When did it happen? When? Yeah. 1909. Wow. Commemorative stamps to commemorate the Shiloh Battle. Just a reminder, these cannonballs also hit people.
should be neat to see if they ever do an illumination again. Oh, uh, yeah. That's one candle for every casualty. Wow. One January night, I rode through the Shiloh Park to see the luminaries. A single candle lit for every casualty of the bloody battle. The flickering lights represented lives, real lives, not statistical ghosts, and the enormity of loss and suffering finally was driven home by candlelight. This is one of the 23,746 lighting the woods and fields of Shiloh during a grand illumination. Wow. So these are like stolen grave markers. Oh. And then read that. for a vandal. Just don't. It's so weird because you could take this, but what are you going to do with it? Like, <laughs> like, why do you want that? And it's just going to end up in your shed. Yeah. It's like crazy. Or you're going to die and your kids are going to be like, oh, grandpa stole this. Either that or you're going to die. And your grandkids are going to donate it to a museum and they're going to be like, hey. <laughs> Oh, this is awesome. Look at the doors. Like, yeah, all tiny. Like real. There's a radiator in here. <laughs> with many of these museums. I can't show you every detail, just highlights and an overall glimpse of the place. But again, I highly encourage you to visit museums when and where you can, every chance you get. See you down the road.